Hi, this is the breaded fish and thanks for checking out my Overwatch 2 latency guide. I figured this stuff out because I was curious about Nvidia Reflex and on my journey to understand it, I learned a lot about latency. So specifically, we're gonna be optimizing render latency. What is render latency? Render latency essentially is the time it takes your graphics card to generate an image after it receives the instructions from the CPU. Wouldn't you say this is just FPS? Not quite. Latency is a factor in FPS, but can have high FPS and have varying latency. Just because your FPS is high does not mean that your latency is low. Low latency is good, high latency is bad. So why should you care about your render latency? Well, one reason that you might not be aware of is something called Peaker's Advantage. What is Peaker's Advantage? Peaker's Advantage is when you are behind cover and the enemy is around the corner. So this little bot right here. When you peek the corner to take a look at them, you can literally see them first before they can see you. That's why it's called Peaker's Advantage. And the, f the lower or the faster your latency is, the longer period of time you have where you can see them and they cannot see you. Here's a short clip from NVIDIA that demonstrates Peaker's Advantage. Let's talk about Peaker's Advantage, another scenario common in multiplayer games. Peaker's Advantage is when the attacker typically is able to see the defender by working an angle first, and the defender has to wait for all the latencies to accumulate before he can see the attacker. On the left-hand side is a system with low system latency, and on the right-hand side is a system with high system latency. Both of them have the same network latency. As you can see here, the system with the high system latency is at a disadvantage compared to the system on the left. That user gets a much greater advantage in terms of visibility. If we reverse the scenario and take a look at it from the defender's perspective, you can see that with a faster system latency, it actually mitigates some of that peaker's advantage, giving them the opportunity to take that shot first. I'm sure you can appreciate just how important latency is now. It could be the difference between winning and losing a game. NVIDIA's got a lot more on this, and I encourage you to check it out if you're curious. The link is in the description. So I've noticed that the existing Overwatch 2 guides that do cover latency just say, turn all your graphic settings down to the lowest, and you'll have the best latency your system's capable of. Well, this is true. It's really, really sad. If you're like me and you spent a good amount of money on a, a really good PC, you know, with good graphics card, you kind of want your games to look better. That's why you spent all that money. So I'm going to show you how you can turn the graphics settings up while maintaining the lowest latency that your system's capable of. Afterwards, I'll go into a pretty basic explanation of what NVIDIA Reflex is and what exactly is the boost option and why, if you have an NVIDIA card, you should be turning these on. I have an NVIDIA graphics card and I made this guide with it. I'm not sure if the software that I'm going to show you works on AMD. If it doesn't, please let me know in the comments. And if it does, let me know. Okay, so all we need for this is obviously we're going to need Overwatch 2 and a program called NVIDIA Frame View. What we need Frame View for is it's going to show us an on-screen display, an overlay that with something called PCL. In the top right corner, you can see it's overlay. PCL is the number that we're going to be paying attention to. But we're going to start with all of our settings at the very lowest so that we know our baseline. This is the best latency that our computer is possible of generating. All right, so on the first settings page under video, video, ideally you should be playing in full screen, but I play in borderless window because I've got multiple monitors and it's a pain in the butt in full screen. Dynamic render scale, keep this off. This is an NVIDIA guide, so we're gonna use DLSS and we want quality because we want our game to look good. Frame rate, custom, set it up max. Unless you're not using an NVIDIA GPU and can't use NVIDIA Reflex, then what you wanna do is you wanna set your maximum frame rate to double of whatever your, your monitor's refresh rate is. So if you've got a 60 hertz monitor, you want it to be 120. If you've got a 144 hertz monitor, you want it to be 288. But if you're using NVIDIA Reflex, don't worry about it. Set it up to max. VSync off, triple buffering off. A lot of people tell you to, to turn reduce buffering on. But if you're using NVIDIA Reflex, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, turn this off. NVIDIA Reflex does what reduce buffering does better. So you don't want them to conflict with each other. And NVIDIA Reflex, if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card, turn this on and turn up boost. I will explain later at the end of the video a little bit more detail about what NVIDIA Reflex is, why you need it, why you want boost on. Okay, and in the second page, graphics quality, we're gonna we're gonna do a baseline of 
what the best latency is our system's capable of producing. So just turn everything down to its lowest, absolutely everything. I recommend uh, backing up your settings just in case this doesn't work out for you and you can go right back to where you were if that's what you want. Just take a little screenshot of it, keep it, keep it open, and then you'll have it later to refer to. As you can see, it says that we need to restart. Anytime we change the settings and it says we need to restart, go ahead and restart. Okay, so we're back in the game and we've got the lowest graphic settings loaded. This is a nice program called NVIDIA Frame View. What we care about this is the PCL, and that is PC latency. So the first thing that we're gonna do is measure a baseline latency. Walk up to this corner right here and just put your crosshair on top of the little bot there. I have it pointed at his face. Whatever you do, do it consistently, do it exactly the same every single time. We're just gonna wait for the, the bot writing the, the platform to come back. And when he rounds the corner, then I'm gonna take a look at the PCL number and just keep an eye on it. And we're gonna watch it until the bot comes back around. What we wanna see is what's the highest number that PCL reaches when we're just sitting here in this exact spot doing nothing, okay? So now we're gonna pay attention to it. And so far it's just reached a little over four. What I want to pay attention to now is does it reach over 4.5? If it reaches over 4.5, I'll consider the base latency five milliseconds. Uh, if it does not reach over 4.5, I will consider it four milliseconds. So just round it to the nearest whole number. So far it's looking like four. And yes, there is an averaging feature built within FrameView, but we don't use it until the third test. Okay. All right, it's rounded again, and it did not reach over 4.5, so we're gonna make a note of four there. Okay, so now we want to get a peak latency. So we're gonna turn around over here, and we're gonna go wild, go crazy, attack these bots, try to simulate the hecticness and the madness that goes on in a real match. And get, get all around here in this area, lots of different points, and just keep an eye on your PCL number up there. So right now it looks like the peak is 5 milliseconds. I might have missed a little bit there. That's okay. We'll just keep staying here and fighting. Okay, 5.5, 6. So 6 is my peak. Gonna still keep going around. I'm gonna wait until I've got transcendence to get a little particle effects going in this area. I think that was 6.49, so it's very, very, very close to 6.5. Doesn't look like my latency goes up too much for transcendence. Hmm. Interesting. Just do this for a little while, just what until you're confident that the PCL is not going to peak even more than what it's already done so far. And it looks like 6.49 is the most, which rounds down to 6, so I'm going to make a note of that just barely stays at six milliseconds. Okay, and so now we're gonna go get a real average. What I do is I come to the spot over here, I stand right next to him, I aim directly at this tank's face, and we're gonna hold down the primary fire button until he dies four times. But, like I said, we're gonna get an average this time, and to do that, you press scroll lock to get frame view to start recording, and you press scroll lock again to get it to stop recording, and then it displays the average. So once he regens, start firing, press scroll lock, you'll hear a little chime when it kicks in. And when he dies four times, I just press scroll lock again, and we're gonna record whatever the average is. And yes, the on-screen overlay for frame view does disappear while it's recording. That's three. And four. Okay, so four milliseconds. Make a note of that.
All right, so what you're gonna do next is you're gonna go back to your graphics settings, back in graphics quality, and one by one, you're gonna turn up a graphics setting just one notch. So we're gonna start at the very beginning. We'll start from the top and work our way down. So we'll start with texture quality. We're gonna bump it up to median. You've got to restart. So apply it, restart the game. Once you've restarted, then you're gonna repeat all three steps over again. So go back over to our starting point, do the baseline. If at any point, if it changes lower, record the new lower number. If it changes higher, like let's say the base went from four milliseconds to five milliseconds, then you can stop right there. You don't have to continue doing the other ones. So if it, let's say it peak went up to seven instead, what I would do is I'd go back to options, graphics quality, I would revert whatever the previous setting I just bumped up one, revert it back to its previous one, hit apply, restart. Then you'll move down, once you've restarted, you'll move down to the next setting and bump that one up one and repeat. If your latency doesn't get worse with that one, go back bump it up one more, repeat the process, restart every single time it tells you to restart, and just methodically go through every single setting and figure out what the, the highest setting for each one of these categories you can get away with without increasing your latency, which would mean making it longer. And that's it. It's really not too hard. It's just you have to be consistent. You have to do the same thing every single time. The only thing that's not going to be consistent is measuring peak. Go wild. Just try to push your computer as much as you possibly can when you're doing that. And that's it. Also, set aside at least an hour to do this. This is not quick. This is going to take some time, especially since you have to restart the game every single time you make a change on some of these settings. Sometimes these settings do not prompt you to restart, and you do not have to restart. You can just roll with it until it does actually prompt you to restart. Okay, so now I'm going to go over just a really quick overview of NVIDIA Reflex and why, if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, you want to enable plus the boost. What exactly does NVIDIA Reflex Reflex do? Link to this website's in the description. So essentially, you can see there's a pretty big process of stuff that your computer does to render your video game. It works from left to right, and some things happen consecutively as or happen at the same time. So you can see they're stacked on top of each other here. What NVIDIA Reflex does is, is it consolidates and it removes a lot of these steps that are unnecessary. So you can see a whole bunch of that stuff's gone. The render queue basically disappears. So your computer is doing stuff in real time and it's not buffering. In a nutshell, what NVIDIA Reflex does is it looks at your frame rate, it looks at your latency, it says, okay, all this extra steps aren't needed. Let's just get rid of them and boom, we can get a lot better latency because we're not doing unnecessary things. But if your game isn't performing well and you've got low FPS, Reflex is smart enough to know like, hey, all these extra steps are necessary because we're kind of struggling to render this game, so keep the extra stuff. It only consolidates and removes unnecessary steps when you've got high performance, high frame rates. What does the boost do? Well, what boost does is it tells your graphics card not to throttle itself, to run at its max clock speeds. Yes, this is going to use more power. Obviously, it's not more energy efficient. We don't care about that. We want the lowest latency possible. So we want our graphics card to be running at its max clock speeds constantly in order to get the lowest latency. If it's continually throttling itself and then running to max, it does introduce some latency and we don't want that. So run with plus boost. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. If you've got any questions or something's not working right, please leave a comment. I will reply to it. And please like and subscribe if this helped you out and you enjoyed the content. I do also stream Overwatch 2 on Twitch. Please check out the page. Give it a follow. Check out my schedule. Thanks.